Hello, Assalamualaikum, Dr. Jeffrey Jaffa, and good morning to all my audience. In my presentation, my name is Zaref Lukmani ben Zari, and I am a final year student in chemical engineering. Today, I would like to carry out my presentation regarding my research project too. Due to the limited view that Microsoft Office offer, the poster presentation will be carried out like a presentation form. There, each segment will be divided by parts. For the panel ease of view, a soft copy of full-size poster will be included, which will be sent through WhatsApp. My research project title is Corrosion Inhibition Performance of Volatile Corrosion Inhibitor, or also noted as VCI for short, towards the occurrence of the top of the line corrosion PLC in sweet environment. A bit introduction about my presentation, it is known that a transfer of crude petroleum has been carried out in subsea pipeline that stretches hundreds of kilometers. This posed a huge challenge maintenance, <coughs> a huge maintenance issue at enormous cost to oil and gas companies in combating uh, the naturally occurring corrosion of metal of the asset. Not just that, TLC was recently discovered and many organizations are carrying out the research to combat this in order to maintain their asset integrity and prevent unwanted damage to the environment, safety and health, as well as the economic. Currently, it is noted that the application of VCI is one of the most effective mitigation efforts in countering the TLC pipeline. One of the challenges in employing VCI in the pipeline is the existence of pre-corroded substance that took place after pigging operation has been carried out. Such occurrence will be taken into consideration as well when employing VCI as TLC mitigation in the sweet environment. The objective of this research is to determine the VCI efficiency in mitigating TLC and BLC. TLC is the top of the line corrosion and BLC is the bottom of the line corrosion in oil and gas pipeline. In order to have reliable result, this research will comply the guideline produced by the American Standard of Testing Material, ASTM, which are ASTM G103, which is preparing and cleaning, and for it is used for highly for uniform corrosion to determine the uniform corrosion rate of the steel pipeline, and ASTM G46 for the pitting analysis by means of using infinite focus microscopy. In oil and gas pipeline operation, the petroleum products from the reservoir have high temperature. The hot petroleum product that exists as vapor condensed on the around 10 to 2 o'clock on the internal steel surface. This condensation occurs when the cool temperature from the seawater cools the hot vapor inside the pipeline, which turns into water and gas condensate on that region. For short, the condensation of this vapor are due to the temperature difference between the gas temperature inside the pipeline and the cool seawater at this pipeline exterior. Speaking of the corrosion inhibitor mechanism, the corrosion inhibitor will need to be contact on the steel surface first. The corrosion inhibitor will then chemise up with the surface steel surface, which creates a protective layer from corrosion attack. Other than that, the application of conventional corrosion inhibitor, or we shall say CCI, on the pipeline has their own limitation, which is, does not protect the 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock of the pipeline. Therefore, VCI is developed to tackle this issue. The big difference between VCI and CCI is the volatility. VCI will vaporize and establish a protective layer on the internal steel pipeline of that specific area. By theory, <coughs> although it is thought that the internal surface has been covered by this corrosion inhibitor protective layer when VCI is employed, there are a situation that should not be left unmentioned. Prior of VCI injection, a scrapping of existing corrosion product will be carried out by means of picking first. As the scrapping work has been completed, while waiting for the VCI to be delivered, which covers the injection and time for it to establish, a new corrosion product has been formed at the steel surface. This corrosion product hinders the establishment of VCI protective layer, which reduces the VCI efficiency in mitigating TLC in the pipeline. For this experiment, the TLC experiment is carried out at 1000 ppm of VCI at 70 degrees C. 1 ATM in open system with continuous carbon dioxide flow, which creates it the, the sweet environment. This experiment is to evaluate the VCI efficiency in mitigating TLC in sweet environment. In this experiment, three separate experiments will be <coughs> with the same parametric value will be carried out for five days testing period, which are noted as blank testing, where there is no VCI is injected. This is known as the control of the experiment, pre-corroded environment, and batch injection. 
The difference between pre-corroded and batch injection is pre-corroded is injected on day one. Meanwhile, the batch injection is injected, is have VCI injected to it on day zero, right after the completion of the equipment setup. Hypothesis can be concluded by observing the change and in uniform corrosion rate and pitting corrosion rate as well as the surface structure and morphology of the steel sample. For each experiment, there will be the same procedure which can be shown in the flowchart below. The blue block indicates, indicates the pre-experiment activities, green indicates the during experiment activities, and orange indicates the post-experiment activities. Each experiment will have four steel coupons, which is noted as top coupons, which have two pieces, and bottom coupon, as, which also have two pieces. For the pre-experiment activities, the bottom solution is mixed with the sodium chloride and add <coughs> to mimic the water properties inside the reservoir. For the coupon, it will be polished first using a metal polishing machine. For the pH probe, it is important that pH is calibrated first. In this case, there are three pH probes that need to be calibrated, which where two of it is to measure the pH of the condensed water, and the other one is to measure the bottom solution prior and after the experiment. For the gas outlet, it is need to be treated, <coughs> treated first. Therefore, activated carbon and NaOH solution is prepared to neutralize the gas coming out of the system. For the TLC assembly unit, the thermocouple and pH probe is installed to, to their designated location, followed by steel coupon for top and bottom. The glass cell is then closed and, air, and, and airtight is ensured by putting rubber ring in the middle of the glass cell and the glass lid. The experiment setup is shown in the right diagram. The setup mimics the satisfied flow of fluid inside the steel pipeline. For the bottom solution, or also noted as brine solution, the solution is poured carefully to the glass cell. The coupon is mounted on the glass cells where cooling keeps on running on the upper section of the coupon as shown at the top right image. After that, dosing of acetic acid followed by gas condensate and VCI is carried out. At the bottom of the glass cell, the heater is turned on to 70 degrees C. This allows the experiment the temperature different. This gives the experiment the temperature different, which allows TLC to occur. At the surface of the water, gas condensate <coughs> is present. To create the sweet environment, CO2 is allowed to enter the system by means of a sponge. For the water condensate collection, the condensate is collected in the funnel which connects the water <coughs> a special water condensation condensate collector for a periodic collection. At the water condensate, Collected, there are a pH probe, which I just mentioned you now. The pH probe will be installed to evaluate and assess and monitor the pH of the condensed water throughout the testing period. The condensed water is then sampled to go through iron count spectrometer when the iron where iron reagent is used. And for the post-experiment activities, the heater is turned off which signals the end of the experiment and followed by the assembly of the TLC glass cell itself. For the remaining bottom solution, the remaining volume and pH are recorded and the sample is taken out for iron count analysis using iron reagent. For the, all the coupon except top two, which means one of the top coupon, it will go to ASTM <coughs> except for one top coupon, will, all of the coupon will go through the ASTM G1 Zero 03, which is preparing and cleaning for weight loss calculation. Here, the initial mass of the steel coupon and the post experiment value is compared and corrosion rate can be determined. The coupon will be analyzed later using an IFM where pitting depth can be determined, which helps calculating the pitting rate as described in ASTM G46 guideline. Meanwhile, for the top two coupon, which is not uh, go to ASTM G103 yet, the coupon will go to SEM EDX analysis where its surface morphology will be analyzed. After, after this step is carried out, then it will be cleaned and it will go through go through the weight loss steps just like the other coupon has been done. Further details will be described further in the further section soon. For our result, you can see four coupon. Noted, this set of coupon is obtained from VCI injection based on the periodic data collection of this <coughs> Sorry. Collection of all three experiments, the combined graph is recorded to visualize the trend of the data reading in this case water condensation rate, delta temperature, and pH. 
Delta temperature means the temperature difference between gas temperature and the steel coupon temperature. <coughs> All of these three factors has a significant influence on the TLC accuracy. The most right of the column is the image of the pitting depth, which is the reading is generated by the infinite focus microscope instrument. For each coupon, reading is carried out at least four times to determine the deepest pit depth value in the steel coupon. <coughs> Based on the reading, the highest value of each test top and bottom coupon can be seen on the table right in the corner. After the coupon has been through the ASTM G103 treatment, the weight loss is measured. Weight loss measuring is carried out by comparing the initial weight of the coupon and the final weight of the ASTM G103 treatment. The uniform corrosion rate can be seen on the blue chart in both graphs. Meanwhile, for pitting graph, with pitting rate, we can see on the red graph, <coughs> sorry, red bar chart on both graphs, the value of pitting depth is divided by unit per unit time and put side by side to visualize the difference for uh, uniform corrosion rate. In this experiment, the goal is to evaluate the VCI performance. Therefore, blank test where there is not this <coughs> there is no VCI injection will be the control for the test. Looking at both graphs, the VCI has significantly decreased both uniform corrosion rate for batch injection and testing. <coughs> sorry, batch injection testing and pre corroded testing. Nevertheless, despite the decrease, it is noticeable that the pitting rate increased significantly. The science behind it is when VCI established its protective layer against corrosion attack, it must be taken into account that not entire steel surfaces are protected. There are the corroding agents attack the loophole in which the location does not have the VCI established in on the layer. These corroding agents will concentrate the attack on one place which makes the depth significantly higher. Now, let's proceed with the SEM part. Here, you can see the SEM or Scanning Electron Microsoft analysis of the bottom coupon for batch testing. Having SEM will allow the user to have magnification which is up to 500 times. When location of interest has been chosen, the ADX function will be initiated. Do you note, this is one of the coupon sample which chosen is batch bottom. As the EDS function is activated, we selected four areas of interest which have significantly <coughs> which have different physical appearance. The steel coupon surface are analyzed further using EDX at the end of the experiment to evaluate the VCI protective layer and the corrosion product form from the surface morphology. Differences of corrosion product crystal shows that shows the varying corrosion mechanism and product are present on the surface. Corrosion products that are deposited on the steel coupon surface are not removed, not treated with cleaning agent. The goal is, is to approach to retain the corrosion product on the steel surface and allow the morphology to be analyzed using the SEM and EDX. In this analysis, common elements chosen are carbon, oxygen, silicon, sulfur, manganese, ferrum, cobalt, and nitrogen. And there are four selected areas of interest that will be analyzed. Referring from the figure below, it can be observed that quantitatively result of the surface composition which will be discussed in this section. Speaking of the oxygen, it is not surprised that in this element comprise most percentage of the selected area. One of the factors is the exposure to ambient condition, which I just mentioned just now, which makes existing chemical on the steel surface to be oxidized. Other than that, corrosion product can be notably noticed on the rough surface of the steel. By relating the to the chemical involved in the testing such as acetaldehyde, CO2 and water, the possible corrosion products are ferrum carbide, ferrum carbonate, ferrum hydroxide, ferrum acetate and <coughs> ferrum, <that's coughs> ferrum oxide again. For the presence of sulfur in the steel surface, it can be seen. The smooth section, this means the VCI which is the tile based VCI has successfully established its protective layer at the steel surface. Another indication of successful inhibition is the visible polish marking, which basically a combination of straight line at the same magnitude as can be seen in the figure. As mentioned in as I mentioned in the VCI formation before, VCI will can resolve with the steel surface and establish the corrosion inhibition layer. Next, for the silicon, manganese and cobalt. This component meet the steel alloy of API 5LX65 carbon steel, which is used, which this grade of uh, steel is commonly used in the steel pipeline. 
for this type of materials, silicon, manganese, and cobalt make the alloys components percentage usually made of less than 5% for the maximum composition, while the rest are carbon and iron. As a conclusion, by utilizing the VCI, it can be seen that significant reduction in uniform corrosion rate can be observed for the top and bottom coupon for batch and pre-corded experiment. Nevertheless, it is also observed that fitting rate is signif increased significantly. Through the analysis of SEM EDX, it can be seen that presence of N, sorry, nitrogen and sulfur in the reading shows the VCI has established its protective layer on the steel surface. With that, all adjectives are achieved. As a recommendation, in order to have more accurate SEM EDS result, the coupon should be minimized its exposure to the air to prevent unwanted <coughs> to minimize the unwanted oxidation. Meanwhile, to enhance the steel corrosion production, another batch of VCI can be injected to replenish the protective layer as well as ensuring more areas are inhibited by the VCI. <coughs> Here are my acknowledgement. I would like to thank my supervisor, Mr. I.R. Dr. Najmin Yaakob, for his lesson he has given me. Here you can see my reference. That's all from me. Thank you, Dr. Jeffrey Jaffa. Have a nice day.